about the last time I saw my granddad alive. But it starts after I've been on English asphalt for 10 seconds. This customs officer's in my face, a real pushy young tyke. And he starts what turned out to be a long grilling with that trick bouncers do as well sometimes. You know, of getting all confidential and conspiratorial with you. Like, obviously you've got some drugs though, haven't you? I mean, obviously, yeah. You've got a few drugs though, haven't you? You, you know. You've you, you got some drugs. You, you, got some, you know. Like, I'm going to go, yeah. <laughs> Don't tell anyone. But it's got me vexed, this customs officer, because I've been driving for 24 hours. And when I left France, I was full of it, man. I was like, oh, wow. This is life as it should be lived. La vie comme elle se vie. The French are so warm. You can talk to strangers in cafes. 200 frog kilometres later, <laughs> I was like... You French are all just bitter, because, like, you go on about... Oh, oh, we are the masters of design. We design the Papa du Centre. We design the Citroën car. And then, like, you forget to design a toilet you can actually sit down on. I mean, you like, pretend you didn't want to anyway. Oh, no. Uh, uh, we thought of that already, but uh, we prefer it this way. It is much more hygienic with the shit all over the back of the shoe. <laughs> <laughs> but it's got me close to tears, this customs officer. And I was wondering why, and I think it's because it was night when I left, and 24 hours later, when I finally got home, it would still be night. And I've never really felt I belonged anywhere. And when you're abroad, you start believing in Britishness and all that. And I think what I'm saying is... What you want, what any of us really want from our customs officer as you return home to your native land is... Looking good, young boy. But no, 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 this my fault. Wants to know, like, who I was with, what did I do, where did we go each day, who with and how many times. Unfortunately, whenever I'm confronted by any authority figure, I immediately become this 18th century nobleman bearing the king's seal. I was like... I am a law-abiding, tax-paying British citizen, and I find your questions impertinent, not to say a little rude. Search the car, for I will stomach no more of your insolence. Now, looking back, I wasn't as dignified as all that. I'm a law-abiding, tax-paying British citizen, and I find your Go questions... Back, sir. No more of your insolence. I know. Maybe it's just me. You know, I just, I just lack a skin. I've just got a skin too few. Because, like, as I drove up from Dover that day, I, I stopped off at a little eater or somewhere in there like that, and I thought I was in heaven. Brilliant. Little eater welcomes you. <laughs> for me. I can't accept that. You're too kind. I don't deserve this. You're all... <laughs> oh, there's a little terrain here with a pickle and a mustard and a ketchup in it. <laughs> Did you guys know about this? <laughs> this is the best place ever. I love this man. Little Ina. They care. They care. But in there, in there among the bolted down chairs, I felt I belonged. Got home, 9am, tired but miles from sleep. And all I remember is this sudden compulsion to go and visit my granddad, who I hadn't seen since I was 13 years old, the only other Newman still alive. So I got back into the startled car, crossed town, and he came to the front door and I said, uh, hello, you won't recognise me, but I'm your grandson, Robert. And he said, oh, how are you? Hello, you must come in, you must come in. Sometimes... If you're adopted, no matter how kind everyone is to you, how welcome they make you feel, still at the back of your mind lurks this doubt that you don't belong. Not really. But in there, in that slow clock front room, I felt totally connected, linked to time past and time present. You know, d the story of London, the greater story, the, the interconnection of people. At last, after four eight hours of travel, I finally felt I'd come home. And just then, and this is absolutely true, my granddad turned to me and he said, So, let me get this straight. Who are you exactly? <laughs> now, there is no 
need for 40% of all diving accidents to happen. All it requires is an elementary check that there are no swimmers immediately below and no fellow divers on the lower boards. Now, there was no need for that to happen. It could have been avoided. It should have been avoided. This should have been for your dialysis machine. Unfortunately, the presence of a broken outhouse meant that the writers were unable to resist the following joke. <laughs> Why is it that it's when your girlfriend's feeling a bit down, a bit under the weather, that that's when you most want to shag her? <laughs> but suggest, you know, a bit of hanky-panky at this time, and it's like, you animal! <laughs> How can you possibly suggest such a thing? I mean, I've just been run over! <laughs> that's typical, isn't it? I mean, you never want to do it when I want to do it. Do you? I will never understand men. Uh, you just don't try hard enough. Oh! I can't believe it. That's terrible of me. I mean, her mother's been hurt in this crash and everything. Of course, of course she wouldn't want to have sex at a time like this. Not with any man. <laughs> and how did it get like this that I only want sex when she doesn't want it? It used to be so different when we first started out, you know, we were such a typical couple. You know how it is. Like when couples first start going out with each other, they pretend that they both just don't go to the toilet. You know, they pretend they don't even know what a toilet is. Toilet? 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 What is it? <laughs> no, no, I'm too sexy for that. I'm on a dialysis machine. <laughs> and the other thing couples pretend is that they never, ever fart. Fart? No, I never. No, not me. How'd you do it? <laughs> then there comes a time when you're sleeping with your partner and you just have to, right? <laughs> You know, it's, like it's either a fart or appendicitis. <laughs> so, you do the only thing possible, which is to surreptitiously reach down below the duvet and pull your buttocks apart. <laughs> but then there is the one time in a thousand when this will actually amplify the noise. <laughs> and make it go a bit strange. <laughs> Suddenly, <laughs> it's coming out of your body. So you shut them quickly, it goes, Wah. You go, Wah. You go, Wah, 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 Wah. Until eventually, your partner turns round and says, Is Rolf Harris in here? <laughs> oh, my God. How's your mum? She's dead. She died just before I got there. I'm sorry. I'm so, so sorry. That's terrible. I just can't believe it. I'm so upset. If it's any help, I was reading an article yesterday which suggested that one cure for grief was strenuous physical exercise of some kind. Let me see, what is there? She was the... there one minute, and now she's gone. Why don't you just have a nice, quiet lie down? OK. That's it. I've lost her. Oh God, I really need to talk to someone. A friend. Someone. Anyone. Billy! Ah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. David. I know what you're going through. I've been through this. Have you? I well remember the house of despair. Thinking there was no way out. Seeing the sky suddenly turn black. As you do. <laughs> Go away! Gooseberry, get out! Is everything all right with JJ, David? Oh, yes, no, fine. Lovely jam, oh, yes. Oh, oh no. Mm. Yum, yum, yum. Mm. Oh. Ah. 
I'll tell you the worst thing about all this. It means I'm back to looking through my pants, deciding which ones to wear. Because <laughs> I, I have a system with my pants, which is it. Basically, I have uh, about 100 crap pants and about five good pants. And what I do is I wear the good pants if I think I'm going to pull. <laughs> it's a whole hierarchy. Basically, this is it. Definite shag, next silk boxers, right? <laughs> Possible shag, on briefs. Sad night out with the lads, greying potato sack. <laughs> but of course, nothing, but nothing will scuffle my chances of pulling but wearing the good pants. And on those days on which I've got on the greying potato sack, oh yeah, suddenly I'm North London's biggest fanny magna. <laughs> But there, there is a solution to this, right? There's a way around it. That is, what you do is you carry around with you at all times a selection of pants, right? What you do is you go out wearing the crap pants, then you pull, of course, then you go into the toilet, the club or whatever, and you quickly slip on the good pants, right? And what happened to me last time I did this was that the woman that I was after, she saw me leaving the gent's toilet, stuffing into my pocket what was apparently another man's pants. <laughs> and that was the end of that. So I'm not going back to partner searching hell. That's it, I'm going to phone her right now. Hello? Hi, look, I just want to come round and comfort you. Well, actually, I don't need that. I've got a friend here now, and everything's fine. And you know why? Because there's no sexual pressure. Because his world doesn't revolve around his dick. But you, David, you can't even imagine a relationship between a man and a woman where there's no sexual undercurrent and where there's just mutual respect. There, there, my dear. You know that I'm always here to give you sucker. Oh, God. a real laugh, as you do, <laughs> like that. I do not look stupid, you do not look stupid, we, we do not look stupid. stupid. Now, as you know, one of us cannot be here today. Daniel is still recovering after being beaten up in what was clearly a jokist attack. Now, I don't want to go into the details, but you should be aware that it was a very, very vicious attack, indeed. And what made it worse was, when I got to casualty, they treated me like I was some kind of time waster. <laughs> what I want is to sit you, and uh, I don't want to say this in front of everybody, but I think the time has come for us to take some kind of direct action. You know, show them they can't mess us around. Right? Yes, I'm, I'm sorry. I can't deal with this just now. I let Helen down, very badly. Yes, yeah, she told me. It was the shock of it, you know. I, I had no idea that she had breasts of restricted seriousness. Well, I know how you feel. My wife has buttocks of restricted seriousness. <laughs> she has a job at Pizza Hut making deep pan flan bases. <laughs> Jim! Oh, God, it's another attack. He's gone, I'm afraid. God bless you.
I came to realize that my problem with Helen was a kind of self-hate, I think, sort of low self-esteem. Uh, it was as if any woman who would want to go out with me, by definition, couldn't be worth much. It was as if, how would you put it, it was as if I wouldn't want to belong to any club that would have me as a member. I did this gig in Norwich, and after the gig I was in the cafe, and a man came up to me with a beard, and he asked me very politely, and a very dulcet voice, did I have a light? I said, no, we went our different ways. And then, uh, a bit later, a couple of the lighting guys came in, they said, ah, oh, special case in today, and he's like the local nutter. And they pointed, and of course it's the same guy, only this time, he's not, uh, you know, he's going, oh, God, 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 God. <laughs> And because he'd been so compassmentous when he asked me for the light, I suddenly realised that when you see street crazies gnashing and wailing, they're not wrestling with the foul fiend that haunts him. Just with self-consciousness, you know, with social embarrassment. He knew he was about to shout something out and he was just terribly embarrassed by this. Oh, God, I just know I'm going to shout something out soon. I just, <laughs> I just can't feel that's going to be so embarrassing. It's personal! <laughs> Humiliating. I mean, luckily it was monosyllabic. People might just think I was coughing, you know. Hopefully I've got away with it. Slide! Slide! <laughs> There goes that theory. Oh dear, it's so rude. I can't believe I said that. I mean, it's, it's humiliating. I mean, at least I haven't started barking. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> there goes that theory. I mean, oh, dear, that takes the biscuit. Barking. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't believe I did that. That was so rude. I, I really, I, you mustn't think that I'm the sort of person that does usually bark at people. Oh God, and, and spitting as well. I've, I've spat. <laughs> Oh, God. I really must try now very hard not to attract attention to myself, and above all, I must not, must not start to do inept kung fu shadow boxing. as well. I must show the lads that I'm reliant on their good graces and I'm not being aggressive, really. <laughs> Give me the kicking I so richly deserve at this point. There isn't a court in the land that will convict them. <laughs> well, I thought the long slide special case was on down to the bin and out the other side, starting from the days when he still had even a girlfriend. I'm just feeling really insecure at the moment. It's a very difficult time for me right now. I just need someone to reassure me and tell me I'm a worthwhile person. I think I know the kind of thing you want me to say. Slow! <laughs> well, that wasn't it, was it? I, I, forgive me, like, I can't believe I said that. I, I just can't believe I said it. I mean, I just want you to know that I am here for you. Oh! <laughs> I can't believe I said that. Just, I mean, that wasn't very supportive, was it? I mean, I know it wasn't. You absolute prostitute! <laughs> I can't believe I said that. I never thought of how he'd lose his job and he'd have to get a menial job and then he'd lose even that. Oh, no. no I, I must not throw my boss's hat out the window. I'll have to go down and get it. it, it it's, it's four flights down and I've got a heart condition. <laughs> I can't believe I just did that. I mean, what did I just say? Oh. Oh, 
Hopefully now I've learned my lesson. I can't believe I just did that. Oh, what did I just say? Oh, God. Up. Okay, on this job, no one refers to each other by their real name. You, you're Mr. Green. You, you're Mr. Red. You, you're Mr. Moe. You, you're Mr. Wobbly Figure. You, you're Mr. Hey, Gray. Hey, hey, John, you. why do I have to be Mr. Wobbly Tickle? Wobbly Tickle, it sounds silly. Why can't I be Mr. Black? Let's go to work. Someone set us up. One of you guys here is not a regular guy. Someone's different. We just gotta find out who it is. Well, I reckon it was Mr. Moe. He don't look right. At least I'm a goddamn <laughs> professional. At least when the bullets started flying, I didn't start going wobbly do. <laughs> what is it with this wobbly do wobbly fing day crap anyway? Hey, don't badmouth Mr. Wobbly Tickle, okay? Whenever I'm involved in any kind of minor mishap that has to be solved in a light-hearted manner involving the use of a wobble and or tickle, e.g. some fruit being wobbled and or tickled from a tree, I always knew I could rely on this guy. Like the song says, when you're in the dumps, here comes Mr. Bump. But when you're in a pickle, call Mr. Wobbly Tickle. Oh, God, my goddamn light! <laughs> Should help pay for your dialysis machine. Good evening and welcome to History Today. We continue this evening with the subject of the Enclosures Act and its effect on the English rural population, as it would appear. There are those who feel that last week, myself and Professor Lewis didn't quite make the inroads into the subject that perhaps we might. So I wonder, Professor Lewis, whether you would agree with the Marxist that the Enclosures Act forms the point at which government first effectively becomes state. See that. <laughs> I have observed the image. That's you in your latest clothes, that is. <laughs> That's you trying your best to be really with it. That's what you wear when you're out on the pull. See that? I have observed the slide. That's your gang, that is. <laughs> That's you with your hard mates. Come and have a go if you think you're hard enough. See that? Yes. That's the man who works inside your pants. <laughs> See that? I have observed it. That's your most successful barbecue ever. <laughs> That's like the biggest single gathering of all your friends in the whole world. 
see that. I have observed the woman. That's someone who you've just told your funniest joke. <laughs> oh, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> Tell it to me again, Professor Lewis. <laughs> Do. See that? Yes. That's your prostate gland. <laughs> I haven't got a prostate now. Yes, that's why it's in that warehouse. <laughs> See that. Do you mean the boyish figure in between the two girls? Yes. I have observed the Fauntleroyish figure. You've lost a fight to him. <laughs> He's staring you out right now. You can't look him in the eye. <laughs> Go on, stare at him. You can't. See that? Yes. That's you having your best ever snob. <laughs> well, your bird never told you she was with me. I don't think anyone can mean any doubt that tonight, myself and Professor Lewis have had the most rigorous of debates. Professor Lewis, thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Well, they don't want me shouting and barking as much as I want here. I'm completely safe at last. I just mustn't up the ante. Oh, oh what have I done? I had to push it. I can't believe I did that. But I can't blame them. They're responsible. Lord knows the logistics of this place are difficult enough without being made ten times worse by a violent resident. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs>